friends. Hello, uh, I'm Dale Seaver, and I'm so honored to be your guide and guru through this pocket dimension we call the Deep Night. We're sending this broadcast out through the void of space in hopes that it will reach you wherever you are and that it will be received warmly. Our thanks to our friends at Good Orbit for helping us to produce the transmission tonight. Now a quick look around and we can see... Yep, we're still here, still inside, all of us together. I know uh, if my days are just broken into two questions. Uh, what are you doing now? And what's for dinner? Turns out those are the only two phrases you need for a relationship. Now, some people have said that to really know a person, you have to travel with them. Well, after spending three months in quarantine, I beg to differ. You do hear some people say, though, that this time is a gift. Yes. A gift. But also, I'm not sure you understand how gifts work. Oh, but we're all trying our best, aren't we? We're trying our best, trying to be our best selves as we furiously separate uh, two ply toilet paper into two rolls of individual ply toilet plate paper and uh, growing new onions out of old onions, just doing what we can. And it's so frustrating because we don't know. We don't have an answer. We don't know how to get out of this pandemic pickle that we're in. Although I did hear uh, it recently said that uh, what we should do is just sit still, breathe deeply, and let the radiant light of the universe fill our vessels and heal everything. Now, when I heard that, it struck me as familiar because I had heard those exact words from a fellow named Ron Daglish, a guy I sought out to take a inner light and wellness clinic out in Sedona. I remember those words very distinctly as we sat there naked, except for a pair of heavy socks. And uh, he just kept saying, you know, let the light fill your body and all will be healed and you will be relieved of any burden. Well, the only thing I was relieved of was $300 and a, a bus ticket because I had fallen asleep against a boulder out there by the energy vortex. I missed my bus back to the retreat center. Anyway, <laughs> we do our best is the point. Now, uh, we only have this room for a short period of time because my wife, Belinda, needs to get in here to use uh, the space for her virtual acupuncture class. Now, uh, as a... <laughs> Her practice patient, I can attest. The classes may be virtual, but the needles are very real. Ah, oh, well, the theme tonight, folks, let's get to it. The theme of tonight's show is keeping busy. There's so many people that we're going to talk to tonight, coast to coast, from New York to LA, are out there uh, just a tending to that creative spark and finding new ways to stay active and do wonderful things. And we're going to talk to them about the things that they do and how they do it. And uh, just generally, how's everybody doing? Um, uh, first, though, let's check in with our musical guest uh, for the evening, Camelia Hartman. Uh, if you're out there, come on in. Hello. Just, hello there. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, uh, if my eyes uh, are not mistaken, you're either staying in a place that is haunted or there's some people with you. I, we have company here. Yes, it's very rare and we're super lucky. That um, is lucky. Sister Odetta Hartman. Hi, Odetta. Odetta has been on the show before. It's nice to see you. You too. And, and Evan. Prior on Hi there. Hi there, great to see you. It must be something to be quarantined with musicians. It's a good thing. Yes, yeah. never quiet in this house. <laughs> no, I bet not. And as sisters, have you grown closer? 
it, it would have been pretty hard for us to get any closer than we did before this. But yeah, I would say we have. Yes, you're still, you're still talking to each other. So that's a good sign. <laughs> well, uh, now you're going to come back in a little bit and play a, a song. I gather we're going to debut a new uh, track. That's right. Yeah, it's oh. coming out next week. This is the first time it's ever been performed live. That's exciting. That's exciting. Something to look forward to. But right now, if you could, uh, would you mind playing me a little uh, sitting down music? Now, uh, I'll get up and sit back down, but it just has to be something low and slow, like uh, me staring at the ceiling at 2.30 a.m., contemplating all the money I've spent over the years on crystals, which have, as it turns out, uh, to have proven to have been uh, just utterly ineffective. So <laughs> something like that to go along with that. You've got it. Ah, we've done it. We've done it. That was wonderful sitting down music. Thank you very much. <laughs> Camelia Hartman and company, you're going to be back in a little bit. We'll see you soon. Okay. All right. I love it. Matching outfits and everything. It's wonderful. <laughs> Rose quartz, worthless. Don't need it. Amethyst. You get a headache. It's not going to do anything for you. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Okay. Now, uh, our first guest. Oh, my goodness. Well, you've certainly seen her on your TV because she's in every commercial that's ever been made. And she's also appeared in uh, television programs like Life in Pieces, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and Community Glee, all of the greats. And she's also been staying busy making music uh, during the quarantine. Let's bring her here now, Serena Fialo. Oh. I oh. did it. <laughs> Wonderful. Hello. Hello. Wonderful. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing okay. I wanted to show you these glasses because I, I bought them online and aren't they fun? I that feel like good. if you need something to make, make you happy during quarantine, get yourself some daisy sunglasses. Absolutely. Now, is it a red lens? Does it give you a kind of a roasty sheen? There is a tint. It's not a red lens, but it's more of like a, a nice glow. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean, Serena. Yeah. That's <laughs> wonderful. I mistakenly, I, like a, a tinted shade. I love a tinted shade. I mistakenly bought pink sunglasses. They came with something else, don't ask. But they're, they're pink hued and they make everything so much nicer. And I was like, I just need a bunch of tinted glasses because they yes. make you so happy. Absolutely, light therapy, I think is what's involved there. Now right. uh, you're, you're joining us from Los Angeles. I am, yes. That's correct. And uh, you've made a lot of videos that I've seen, so I kind of recognize your setup. And I have to ask you a question about it, because sure. it seems to me that you might be in maybe the children's department of a crate and barrel or a pottery barn teen. What's, what's going on there? Or just, I'm very strange. And <laughs> this is my exact wallpaper pre-quarantine and will be post-quarantine. And this is my tent. A tent. It has my name on it. If you can, there it is. See? There it is. See, that's yeah. the extra bit there. Yeah. Now, wh what do you do in the tent? Inside of the tent, to be very honest, Dale, I do my voiceovers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. That works. They somehow, it sounds really good in here. I've got blankets, pillows. Look at this. Look at this plush pillow. I oh, mean, my goodness. Right? Yeah. That's a heck of a thing. Are you okay? Did something spill? Yeah. You all right? I spilled, I spilled a bottle, but it wasn't full. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, Everything's good. fine. Everything's <laughs> all right. Fine. It's too early to go off the rails, Serena. All right. So uh, now, now that's wonderful that you're doing that. And uh, I like the idea of a small place inside another small place, which is what I'm in. So I'm thinking that might be, uh, we were thinking of lofting maybe, but I like this just cocooning would be oh, a cocooning. Person idea. It's also very comforting during this time. I know that everyone's like itching to get outside, but there's something about a womb-like structure that's very comforting, thus the tent. Yeah. Forget outside, go deeper inside. <laughs> right. That's, that's the message. <laughs> I, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Now, you have been making uh, over the series of however many weeks it's been, possibly years, who knows, uh, <laughs> a number of songs of quarantunes if yeah. you will. And uh, we shared one on the, on the program not too long ago, uh, your version of Nothing Compares to You. But, but explain what the project is. 
Well, it wasn't really a project at all. It just started with my anxiety being extremely high and not knowing how to cope with it. And music has always been a very calming space for me. And so I was trying to express how I was feeling. This was the very early stages of quarantine. We had, I don't think we had even been officially quarantined yet, but I was very nervous. Um, I, I have like lung issues. So I'm the kind of person that you need to wear a mask for basically. Yes. Um, so I was just in a very light way trying to encourage people to stay inside and be thoughtful and not to go out if it wasn't essential and to help your neighbors and to think about your families and all those things. And so I just started doing them and then um, they have kind of a comedic twist. And so people were writing to me and saying that they were really enjoying it. And as time kept going on and on and on, people were like, this is the best thing about today. And I was like, are you joking? And they said no. And so I kept doing it because I thought it would be fun. Well, it's been wonderful. And do you, do you find that there's some songs that lend themselves to it uh, better than others? Yes, very much. Um, I'm trying to think of one of the ones that was just super, super obvious but I can't at the moment. But what I did start doing was, cause I was doing one every day. And I was yeah. like, <laughs> once day 30 came around, <laughs> I was like, this might be excessive. Maybe this will last for a year. So I started doing this thing that was a challenge for other people um, to send me their own lyrics. And then I would put the song together and then every week I would pick one and share it with followers and so that people like we're doing it together and it's something that I feel like is really helpful because as far as like for me for my anxiety if I am really focused on something and like changing lyrics and making them match perfectly to the music it gets me out of my headspace and I think that might be helpful for other people too so we've been doing it and I've I've shared like six or seven I've been doing one a week so it's been really fun that's fantastic. And if it can also help you, that, that's wonderful to get through it. Um, I, I wonder, though, you know, in this time, uh, I have found myself just kind of reverting to a base version of myself. Has that happened to you? Oh, a base? Like, what do you mean? Like, well, especially when it comes to music and that kind of thing. So I'm uh -huh. just seeking out like the, the old tapes, the old CDs, records, whatever oh. it might be, that, that were just a part of me growing up and I'm just listening to them again and just thinking that's like who I am you know I'm, I'm staying up until 2 a.m. I'm doing all the things that I kind of did as a teenager really I'm just reverting uh, musically and behaviorally. I read an excellent article about this and what it said was basically we're reverting back to those things that bring us comfort when we were growing up and we were kind of quarantined in general because Maybe you didn't have a car or you had a curfew or you lived with your family. So you could only do things when your family said it was okay or whoever you lived with. And so you kind of like raged against that with your own moody music and you slammed your door and you were like, fine, I'll stay home or whatever it was. Or like for me, watching music videos on MTV was like a huge source of comfort. And it was the thing I did when I got home from school and I loved it. So even the songs that I'm covering, the Quarantunes, they're all kind of like songs I grew up listening to that were comforting. And now I'm changing them just for my own, you know. Right, because you know them so well, because they're part of you. Mm -hmm. I get it, Serena. You know, I, this is embarrassing to admit, but I think that I like Billy Joel. Why is that embarrassing? Thank you for saying I so. I saw him like four months ago. Actually, <laughs> October. Who knows where time is? It was time in October. Time is irrelevant. Uh, well, good. See, it started. We were all, we all clap out the windows, and uh, you know we want to help the the service workers, and we and we said uh, started playing uh, New York State of Mind, and so I started looking forward to that moment just to hear the song. But now I'm just playing it all the time. I think I, it reminds me of the time before, Serena, like of being in a hot car, you know, with the windows rolled down and waiting at a gas station on our way to an amusement park, that okay. kind of a thing. Waiting in the mall, all I those love good those memories. memories. Those are amazing memories. It is, and you know what? You said something in your intro that yes. made me think of this, and it was that people are like, this is a gift. And it is and it isn't, because in the grand scheme of things, lots of people are hurting, and it's very sad and it's very scary. But it's Absolutely. sort of like, 
because you were like, what kind of gift is this? It's sort of like that gift that you get from your aunt that you don't really appreciate when you get it, but you save it anyways because your aunt gave it to you. And then years later, you're like, I'm really glad I kept this. So I feel like we're all going to feel that way in some way about this time period. Hopefully if like we can all stay healthy and I mean, it's just a really dark time. So whatever little bits and pieces of light that you can carry with you, that's what I feel like everyone should try to be doing. Yes. And that reminded me of that. Cause it was like, a lot of people don't see any happiness in this right now. And some people are fine with it. Some people are great with it. I don't understand that crowd, but <laughs> yes. God has blessed them. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. Um, well, would you, uh, have you ever done a Billy Joel song as part of your quarantines? Yeah, I did. Um, oh my gosh, wait, where is it? Hold on. I did Piano Man. I did oh, Piano Man. Well, one of the greats. Song on your Instagram. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a parody. <laughs> There's my tent. Yeah, See? no, that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Corona up there on, on the YouTube. Now, uh, one one f uh, last question here, Serena. Yeah. Um, uh, I first uh, interacted with you. I think, uh, you know, you uh, that song is a perfect segue to this because when you were all on Instagram and you're watching things and then they pop up and everything's live and you get nervous and then you're one of two people in a room with a person. <laughs> there's no way to back out really um, yeah. but I jumped into something and there it was you and you were in a cabin somewhere with some mice and I oh, didn't know oh. what happened to the mice oh my gosh that was my friend Courtney's house okay. um we were just this was pre-quarantine we yeah. were just hanging out and we started to I saw something from across the room I mean if you were there you were there but I saw something from across the room and I didn't it's like you're at your friend's house. You don't want to be like, Hey, you have mice. Like that's a weird thing to say to someone. And I, I, but then I saw it again and I was like, I think you have a mouse. And she was like, you're kidding me. And I was like, no, I really think I saw it. And so we kind of like lured it out with cheese and we did find it. And what happened to the mice? I can't really say because I think they went away, but I don't know for sure. And there might've been a, a pest control involved, but I don't want to confirm or deny that. Sure, sure. Um, right now, it might be nice to have a couple of companions. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Well, however, I, however, maybe they got out. Maybe they got out. We hope they got out. They got out. That's right. That's right. Well, it was quite a saga to watch, and I'm glad that it had some kind of, mm, not it really was, a resolution, but we've talked about it. So. <laughs> it was one of the greatest moments at a friend's house that I've ever had. Yes, so, yeah. it, seemed, it was very exciting. Made for good Instagram TV, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and uh, we hope that TV will come back. We don't know. But um, so people can find, so. You're, you're still performing on Instagram and people can find all the songs that you've done on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube or my Instagram. Yep, they're all there. That's great. Well, uh, Serena, I'm so glad that you could join us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll see you maybe in a little bit. Okay, see you later. Stay groovy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Oh, it's our next guest. I was waiting, ready to go. There she is. Our, our next guest is a chef and cookbook author. Is that what you would say? Cookbook author? Is that what the term is? Yeah. Of uh, uh, a book called uh, Cooking for Artists. And she has the cafe over there at MoMA. PS1, Mina's. Uh, I'm just always happy to see her. Mina Stone is here. Mina, how are you? How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. Uh, uh, we ran out of your olive oil, though, and I'm very sad about that. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you had uh, gotten a bottle. I wish I got a case. Thanks, this Carl. stuff is good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's always nice to see you, even through uh, the screen. Um, it's uh, You're somebody who I'm always excited to see, excited to hear about and what you're doing next. But as a person who's a chef who relies on large gatherings, social events, how are you managing this time? Um, well, we're not. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I'm glad um, you could be here. <laughs> Well, our, you know, obviously my career life has totally changed um, and it's, it's pivoted into writing. 
Um, that's okay. And, and that's, I, I feel really lucky for that. And as far as the large gatherings and uh, sort of, yeah, our life really revolved around people and gathering people and feeding people. And uh, I wonder what that future is going to look like. It's something we talk about a lot. Yeah. And, and have you found during this time that you have a lot of people kind of calling you up saying, hey, uh, what, do I, what do I do? I have this in my, in my cabinet and I want to make something. What's the good thing? Is there a spike in calls to the hotline? You know what? There is a spike in Mina. I made this out of your cookbook today. That's pretty good. Yeah, and it's really, it always makes me feel good. It's always really like a little jolt in my day, a little upper. Yeah, uh, but now a uh, quarantine butterball hotline wouldn't be a bad idea for you. <laughs> no, no. I think it's, uh, what do they call it now? The COVID-19? Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would certainly give you a call and see what to do with some of the things that I've got going. You and Allison Roman probably got the market cornered right now on what people are making. Um, uh, is there something that you have made that you just, uh, uh, you, you love? It's like your go-to thing, the thing that's always in your pantry? Um, I'm always making granola. Granola. Yeah. So we uh, brought all the stuff from the restaurant to our house right when the quarantine started and i had so much oatmeal <laughs> and i found it really overwhelming and i don't you know i don't like to have a stuffed cupboard but anyway and i also not a huge fan of oatmeal sometimes yes but granola anytime it's really oatmeal's more elegant cousin isn't it i think so yeah I grew up on a lot of oatmeal. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I have, oh excuse me. I a little toddler. I'm sorry. That's, I'll be right back. That's right. Little uh, sous chef uh, there, probably. Oh. Oh, I heard oatmeal was on the agenda. Bailey, you can relate. You can relate. I can. I get cranky, too. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I've been inside a long time. Um, yeah, the, but the granola recipe is on my Instagram. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah, and, it's really uh, simple. Has there been anything you've just been so excited to try? Like, you've ne you never would have made this before, but uh, yo, am I going to try borscht? No, I didn't go that far. <laughs> my, uh, my best friend, uh, who you know, Julie Miller, she, yes. I think she's watching us tonight. Hi, Julie. But uh, she's been living down the street from me. And what's been really nice is we've been walking to each other's houses and sort of passing off a bag of food that we make. Oh. And I think the one time I took a pass was when she told me she made borscht. And I said, you know what, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip this pass between us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been making uh, curries and uh, they're not good. Really? I love a curry. Yeah. I do too, just but not mine. Well. <laughs> I don't know. I'm only on my third one. Maybe it'll get better. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's okay. Do you need a lot of time? <laughs> Look at this wonderful couch, though. Like, that's a couch you could be quarantined with and be all right. You know, just be comfortable. <laughs> Well, friends, we can just do a, and like a, another half hour of furniture talk. I'm curious about the plant. I don't know if it's real or not. Hi. Hi. Oh, hello. Yes. <laughs> All right. I mean, this is real life, right? It's very, listen, this is what it is. We're all managing and we're all together in all the spaces. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, um, now, have you found any other cookbooks that you've been going to that you uh, just love to, to read through and seek out and maybe find a comfort food that's not granola or some weird well, soup? Well, I love this cookbook called The Flavors of Aleppo. It's a Syrian cookbook. I always like uh, a 
an ethnic, like a new ethnicity I can learn about their cuisine rather than more of the modern day cookbooks, which I love to look for, like look, flip through. But the ones that specify a certain cuisine or culture of a culture, I kind of really pour through. And that one has really good recipes. I highly suggest that cookbook. They're really simple, very different, very informative. I like all of those things. I've been really enjoying Tony Tipton Martin's Jubilee cookbook. <laughs> I don't have that one. Oh, it's a nice, good, it's a good thing to read. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I can't get my muffins to rise, though, Mina. How's that possible? I don't know. Don't say it happens to everyone either. <laughs> it's uh, very difficult. Um, so uh, now I apologize. This is a lot of uh, uh, adoration coming your way. But uh, I, I don't think in, in, the, in the history that no one has made better food that I've eaten. Uh, I mean, oh, it's truly exceptional. You. And and especially when you get to the, because I go to a lot of, I've eaten at every museum cafe there is. I have to kill a lot of time because my wife's often on some kind of workshop deal in different cities. And so I test out the museum cafes. I've eaten in every single one. And aside from a chicken salad sandwich at the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art in Jacksonville, Florida, Mina's Cafe has the best food of any of those things. Wow, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. And the, and the good thing is when you know Mina, uh, you say hi, and then she brings you out little treats. That's, uh, <laughs> that was I my like favorite that. part of having a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And do you think it's going to come back? You're going to, I mean, is, you still got the space? Uh, we still have the space and I, it will pro most likely come back, but I think it's going to come back in a different iteration. Okay. All right. Well, I will be there no matter what. And are you involved in any uh, uh, relief effort kind of things for restaurant folks? Not that you have to be, but. I am not. No, uh, we have a, we have a sort of a pro, like a little group amongst us to help one person that worked at our restaurant get through this. Okay, good. Yeah. And what are you writing? I assume cookbooks, but maybe not. I am writing two things. I'm writing my second cookbook, and um, I'm also interviewing artists for uh, MoMA magazine. Wonderful, great. And I'm interviewing those artists about uh, a recipe that they make that relates to them or is a part of their family or comforting somehow. Well, that's very appropriate for these times, I Mina. It sounds yes. wonderful. And we will look forward to that. And uh, thank you for being here, Mina. Thank it's you wonderful. for having me. It's wonderful. Thank I you. wish you good health and the whole family there, too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and your couch, who I had a lovely chat with. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a little bit. All right. Uh, thanks for being here. We'll do a cosmic dinner sometime. All right. Uh, well, uh, after talking about uh, some food and uh, uh, thinking through some things, I think it's time for some music. So let's bring back Camelia Hartman and, and the gang there with Odetta and Evan. And uh, there they are. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to you. And uh, this is a new track from the album that's going to be released soon. Indeed. We're so excited to play this for you. The track should be coming out um, next week. I think my musical partner and label head, Billy, is watching. So it's probably a little exciting to see it being performed live for the first time from far away. Sorry, we one of our computers just died. So we need about 10 seconds or maybe 15. <laughs> Um, to, to pull up some music. Um, fun fact about this song, it's called The Moment Your Eyes Met Mine. Uh, I'm also a violinist, as is my sister Odetta, and we both played violin on the track, so she's playing with me tonight. And our friend Matar played also. Um, and there's some horns on it. You'll hear the full thing next week. I'm not as good at vamping as, as Dale, maybe. <laughs> do, do, do we need to talk to the couch? Any furniture uh, of interest there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty solid couch here. Yeah. yeah. Have you been sleeping on it, or is it just a musical couch? Someone has slept on it, but none of the three of us. Oh, a mystery. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have to puzzle that out. <laughs> yes. But comfy indeed to sit on. Yeah, it's good. You have the computer charging up. That's okay. What kind of machine are we working with? You know, it's a uh, it's a dial up situation. Uh, a dial up. Oh, good. <laughs> with the we're in the country. We actually just installed Wi-Fi, so this is all. Well, I didn't ask you. Are you allowed to reveal your location? Where are you? We are in Sullivan County, New York. Okay, that's up there somewhere. Shecton Center, to be specific. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. It's best known, actually, for being about 15 minutes away from where the Woodstock concert happened uh, in Bethel, New York. Any that's place that's known for being a certain distance away from another thing is great in my book. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only, that's only kind of been put back on the map in the past few years. For many years, we would say where we lived, and it was just like this black hole of upstate New York with no landmarks or anything to position ourselves. Sure. But now we've got Bethel. And now we have music on the screen, too. Oh, good. Good. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. <clears throat> You moved away last night, I heard Never had a last word All these silly things I said I always hoped you would forget I just remember the good times Those cherished days when you were mine Many a lonely night Did I wish I could see you again? Did I wish I could see you again? So imagine my surprise when I see you walk through that door. The moment your eyes met mine, a moment frozen in You knew our love was cut short It was of the rarest sort If I ever got that chance You know that I would take you back You know that I would take you back
That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the, the album's coming out when next week, you said? It's a single. I a single. I wanted to come out on May 15th. So May 15th. Hopefully we'll stick to it. Fingers crossed. Well, that, that was fantastic. Thank you for, for doing it. Thank you for having us. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Bye -bye. Ah, wonderful. That's wonderful. All right. Uh, well, our next guest is ready, and uh, I've never been uh, not delighted whenever I see him on a show. Uh, uh, he was just on the season finale of Three Busy Debras, and he had a show called Words with Ike. He's been everywhere. A catch a coup of Famadou. Ike, where are you? Uh, da, there you are. Da. <laughs> How oh, are I, you, Ike? I am, uh, I'm doing well. Um, I feel a bit like a newscaster all of a sudden sitting at a desk and um, addressing a camera. Yes, yeah. you'd be good at it. I, I would love to, in some future life, be the host of the Today Show. Oh, is that a real goal? Is that on your vision board? You know, wouldn't that be fun to just say, uh, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Today here on NBC. Uh, <laughs> And then done. And that, that's it. That's all you need to do. That's all I need to do. And then I throw it to someone else to uh, do the actual work of reporting. Yes. Now, Ike, <laughs> you, you, what have you been doing during this time? I know you've been, you've been keeping busy. You've been doing readings or something for people? Yes. Uh, yeah, I had a, uh, I think when it seemed as though we would be hunkering in, hunkering down for a while, I thought, um, why not uh, begin reading Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy uh, nightly on Instagram? And so uh, I have been doing that. And that just last night we finished uh, part three. Uh, here's the book itself. Wow. And um, you can see uh, how far we've gotten uh, so far. <laughs> now, do you just go until the video runs out or do you have a set time? Yeah, basically. Um, uh, yeah, generally speaking, I go for an hour unless my uh, phone starts to die or I get tired. Uh, and feel As Tolstoy intended, by the way. Yes, yes. I, 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 it's clearly, it's clear that that was his intention. And uh, boy, did he, uh, did he really achieve it. <laughs> yes, he did. Now, are you doing voices and that kind of thing when you read it or is it pretty straight through? You know, uh, it's pretty straight through. Um, I was not familiar with uh, the plot at all when I started. And uh -huh. there were so many characters in this book that uh, I'm kind of discovering everything for the first time as I go through it. Um, it's maybe exciting. Next, yeah. Maybe next quarantine I can go back through and since I'll be familiar with it, I can add right. in some characterizations and some... Add a little pizzazz, Ike. Yes. That's yeah, what that book needs. needs. <laughs> now, uh, it looks like it's a kind of a spare situation you're in uh, there, Ike. Uh, okay. des describe the, the setup for me, because I imagined uh, what your home life would be like would just be surrounded by great works of literature, maybe mm. a couple of Tarkovsky DVDs here and there. Um, but oh. what's going on there? Describe your situation. Well, I think if I just shift my body like this, we see all the books. Oh. And then there's another shelf here, but lower, that also has some books. A pretty good um, reveal, like, I really like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't planning on it, but it is a fun little trick we've discovered. I don't have much, I don't have the same kind of excitement. 
Uh, there's also like a world of things uh, just beyond uh, this camera. Um, I would hope so. <laughs> there's a, uh, you know, I've been working on uh, for a long time on a project about leisure and I have this little leisure board of uh, terms and concepts related to leisure. Wow, that's a very organized board of leisure. Yeah, it has to be in order to maximize uh, one's understanding of leisure. But uh, you can, uh, I guess you could imagine uh, the whole wall on the other side of the camera yes. is uh, likewise filled with sticky notes and um, thoughts and, uh, and everything else. Wow. That's a, do you find it relaxing to have that, many, that much leisure organized? Um, it is, uh, well, it, I, I do have fun, uh, I do have fun doing it, and, uh, well, good. Yeah, I guess that's the most important thing. What's the most fun, do you think? Picking out the color of the post-it thing? Uh, writing mm -hmm. down the word, selecting the word? Um, I would say it's, uh, it's a combination of different things, you know, finding the words is always fun. Uh, I know the colors aren't a surprise, but sometimes, but I like to, I don't know, make them, uh, make them, make sure that they're mixed up on the board, uh, which, which helps uh, excite my visual senses. And uh, yeah, perhaps those two things, mixing up the colors and uh, finding new words. I, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I, now, do, would you describe yourself as a man of leisure? Um, I would, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm prepared to answer that at this time. Uh, it's a deep, <laughs> it's a deep question. Um, I think perhaps, uh, some moments. Is that part uh, of the journey that you're on to get there? Yeah, I, 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 you know, it should be, uh, but I feel like I'm, maybe I'm approaching it too academically and I, <laughs> I'm not even applying the lessons I'm learning to my own life. Uh, <laughs> and uh, well, well, just one example of what the word is that's on that board. Okay, let's see. One word on the board. Time pioneers. Time pioneers. Time pioneers. Uh -huh. So one could apply this term to... Uh, Perhaps uh, during the Industrial Revolution, the, uh, the workers who uh, went on strike and demanded to have a day off Saturday, they pioneered a new, uh, uh, a new realm of free time. Uh, they are perhaps our forebears in pioneering the day of Saturday uh, as a they generally free for people, though not free for all people. Sure, sure. Ike, I tell you this, you know how to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question about that. There is no question about that. Now, uh, are you, what's going on with the beard? Are you growing a quarantine beard? You know, uh, the beard I'm growing, it looks pretty, uh, to me, I, I generally just, I'll find myself growing a beard. Um, yeah, I usually just grow out my hair until I'm like, oh, I just gotta cut this hair. Um, but now I, I know that I can't cut. Well, I guess I could cut it myself, um, but, but I haven't yet. Yeah, maybe you need oh. some kind of time pioneer to get in there and invent a new form of haircut time. Mm, haircut time. Haircut time? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there, 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 there should be. I think, uh, I think we have the, we have the resources. We have the technology. Uh, I think. Yes, I think and you have the spreadsheet, so you can you can figure it out. Yes, I could. Uh, the team. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> but have you, and so is that. What what is the point of doing that again? Is it's, a, oh. it's a, working towards a, a writing project or something? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 for a writing project. Okay. Um, so. Um, hopefully within the coming period of time, uh, either a year or so, 
Uh, we'll have a, yeah, we'll be a little show on, on leisure that people can see. I am so looking forward to it. I can't wait to turn that on. I think it's what we need as a nation, honestly. I, I think uh, you're absolutely correct. The the people of this nation have have worked long and hard and uh, doing many things, and I think that they uh, they deserve a break from whatever it is they uh, want to take a break from. Well, I I love checking in with you, and I'm glad that things are going so well. It's uh, really they, it's really exciting, and uh, I know that when this leisure thing hits. You know, it's kind of a slow burn, I bet. But then when it hits, oh, my gosh, watch out. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom. Well, uh, Ike, thank you for being here, friend. It's oh, always great it's, to see you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Good to uh, see you. All right. Stay, uh, stay your relaxed, fun self. Oh, my goodness. So great. Okay. Well, now let's go back out to the uh, best coast, to the West Coast, back to Los Angeles, uh, to an actor and comedian and podcaster who's appeared on Single Parents and People of Earth and has a great comedy special on Amazon called My Mama is a Human and So Am I. Alice Wetterland is here. A very mysterious Alice. Um, hello there. <laughs> oh, that, wow, what a glamorous reveal, Alice. Yes, that was my, I had a sticker over the camera. I forgot about it. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm fine. How are you, Dale? I'm doing okay. Uh, getting through it. And it's, it's great fun to have you here because you're somebody who's really been making the most of this time, I'd say. You, you have a whole, uh, like many of us, have a whole home studio set up. It looks like you may be in uh, the Warhol's factory tonight. Yeah, I'm in yeah. space. Oh, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> We're all in space. <laughs> Once LA hits a certain temperature, you know, you got to go to space. Absolutely. Well, I want to talk about space with you in a little bit, but uh, you've you've been uh, doing something there where you're you're doing the news. Is that what it is? The muse, the muse at five every day. I set up a little um, five p.m. broadcast on Instagram. Um, it started out with my cat, and he quickly, you know, made him a little necktie, and um, he really does not like to wear the necktie, and he doesn't like to be on the news because he. Um, I don't know, something about the way I hold him. Anyway, I had him on with me the other day on an Instagram live um, and he pooped on me. Oh, and so I kind anything of, for ratings. I've been giving him a little bit of a break. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Lately. It is surprising that a cat wouldn't want to wear a necktie. I don't get it. I mean, it doesn't, you know, sometimes I forget that it's on him and he'll just walk around stepping on it. <laughs> yes. Well, and the news can be a little bit much to get through. So I, I lot, understand. You know, I, understand. I think that's really what it is. It's just that there's a lot of stuff, you know, out there and he gets anxiety. So like all of us. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And uh, you've uh, so uh, you've been doing the news, though. You've been reading it, giving us weather reports, uh, everything. Sure. Kind of yeah, mostly in. local weather reports for Los Angeles. I thought, you know, I want to stay informed. And um, I know that people want to stay informed, but in a way that is detached so i just kind of highlight the stories that i think are interesting sometimes i do a jokey take on them uh today i covered the um new york times has an article of uh, sort of just postulating you know different reasons why the u.s might be doing worse with the coronavirus than other nations and i um i had little photos of different like protesters just for each question, like for each time the New York Times was like, we don't know why, it could be anything. I'd have a picture of a protester in, in like doomsday prepper gear, you know, just to say like, well, maybe this is why. Right, right, yes. Because stupid people than other countries. <laughs> well, uh, now, uh, with, the, with the, uh, uh, the, the, the news, speaking of the news and, and the catch, are you, are, are you, troubled by how many people are going out and buying uh, or adopting cats and pets and do you, you feel like that's an okay thing i you know i i think in the in the greater picture like in the in the in the, in the long run it's a good thing because people are giving this opportunity people are giving this uh period of time in which they are stuck inside 
um, they're doing a trial run in which they're like, okay, maybe this is the, this is now I should have a cat or a dog because, and it's probably just spelling a lot of people's preconceived notions about what it means, how much work it is, et cetera. With a cat, it's not very much work. And with a dog, you know, it might be a lot of work, but it sometimes can be worth it. So that's good. It's good for people to have a period of time to get used to that. I, I worry about once people do go back to some sort of natural um, wanting to leave their house type of thing, which I don't normally do anyway. I'm not really doing much different than I normally would. I just stay home anyway. Yeah, uh, okay. But uh, I worry that people will abandon the dogs because people abandon animals all the time. It's, again, you know, we don't, um, we're not a great species. So, <laughs> you know, right. Right. but I think in the, in the overall picture, more people will keep the pets than yes. they will abandon. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if, if the thing is, we end up with a bunch of feral cat newscasters, I'm okay with that. Keep more, you know, more journalists in the field is always a good thing. This is what I'm saying, Alice. I knew you would understand. Now, one of the other things that you have uh, going on there is this uh, Star Trek podcast. Mm, yes. Yes. Treks I, in the City? Treks in the City my, with uh, Veronica Osorio. Yes. And, uh, ugh, what a... What a time to be alive when um, we can talk to people who've never seen Star Trek about Star Trek and just get their views on it. And uh, yeah, we've been able to set up our home studios and record like normal. It's been great so far. And, and, and so you invite people in that have never seen the show, but you yourself, uh, a, a big fan? Huge Star Trek fan, yeah. Big, okay. big Trekker, big Trekkie. Yeah, I've been to conventions. Um, I've loved Star Trek for a long time. Uh, it's uh, it's a wonderful show that I think, it, you know, I like to say Next Generation, it has something for everyone. Yeah, that's that's your one, that's your uh, series? Yes, uh, yeah. I would say so, yeah. I've tried a lot of them. I wish that uh, Enterprise had been better and Discovery is a little weird. Got some odd haircuts in that thing. Oh yeah, and you don't like odd haircuts. Well, there's just, there. there there's better haircuts you could have. Sounds like the pot calling hell black hair. <laughs> it's probably true. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, do, do, you, do you like, so were you a nerdy kid? Is that what you're telling me? Sure. Uh, well, so my parents met watching Star Trek The Next Generation, and my parents being my mom and my stepdad. They okay. watched it. That was like their, that was their Netflix and chill before Netflix happened. They would sit uh, at, and watch at 9 p.m. Star Trek The Next Generation would come on and so I'd look over their shoulder and it was kind of formed a it was a formative part of my I think adolescence I'll say so it's around 10 or 11 and uh yeah and then you know I've, I've come back to it so many times because it, that show has so much to do with my sense of mortality. Aha uh -huh. and and uh, is there a good virus episode kind of a space madness maybe that happened? Well there's plenty of space madness episodes yeah. There's um, one really good one called The Game that people maybe know about where um, people start to become addicted to a, um, what would in today's parlance be probably a phone game. They have these the Google the glasses on and they're like always playing this game and it infects them with sort of like a, a mind disease where they're, they become like slaves to this uh, other species that's, that's using this game as a way of controlling people. And uh, I'm worried that's what Zoom is. There you go. See, that's it's very prescient. Yeah, it is. Uh, if this ever goes away, I'm really going to miss looking into my own eyes. Oh, I mean, it's what mirrors are for. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they used to say, uh, uh, you know, would you like to go to space? You like to go to space, Alice? I'd like to go to space, yeah. yeah. Because they used to say, oh, I don't know if I could make it. It's so many months in a small space traveling yeah. to Mars. I could do it now. I know I could yeah. do it now. See? That's what and, was proved. Well, you know, I would, I would, my caveat would be I would wait till they get space down. You know, I'm not, somebody who's going to get, like, for instance, I won't get plastic surgery until they really figure it out. You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to get stuff that I don't, certain things I'm not going to be an early adopter, you know, yeah. space travel. Yeah. So like third wave Mars is you. I, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, once they've got like a, you know, the, the colony, once the food is good, once they've got like a chef who's got space food, like I, that's a big deal for me, you know? Yeah. A luxury hotel. Once they've got two tiers of hotels on, in space, like a shitty one and a luxury one, that's yeah. when I'm gonna join them. Once you can start earning space status and or miles. 
Get a couple of Mars perks. Now we're talking. I'm all about perks. All about perks. <laughs> Love perks. That's the hardest part of this whole pandemic, I think. Yeah. Missing well, out on my Sky Miles. Well, you know, Delta is going to extend your status, whatever you were at, to the next year over. So you're not going to have to worry about that. That's what is the best news I've heard. There you go. <laughs> only good news. But, for me but now, what was going on? You were really in space. What is the foil? Oh, this behind is, you. Uh, I'm, I'm big into recycling and my, um, I get these like food delivery boxes that uh -huh. have these frozen items in them. And this is part of the packaging. So I just strip this Mylar out and I make things out of it. And so I'm just waiting for those packages to arrive. I strip out the Mylar and uh, I've got a background here. I, I wrap things in them for presents. Mylar is great. Uh, definitely is great. It's an Love essential Mylar. space uh, item too. For sure. That's so wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and recycling. Oh, my goodness. See, you're keeping very busy. I knew it would be a good idea to welcome you on <laughs> here to get a sense of it. Um, I, I, this, I'm very good at this. I don't like people anyway. I don't like seeing people. I, you know, and, and, and I craft. All I do is craft all the time. I got my stickers here. I'm just like, it's, this is my favorite. It's my favorite what's thing. the biggest thing that you've made in this time? What are you most proud of? Sweater. It's not here. It's, it's at my boyfriend's house, but I also made this weaving that I can show you. And I also, I've been updating my website. That's a big deal for me. But I made this weaving I can show you here. It's something that I, you know, I started a long time ago, but now I'm getting pretty good at it. So that's good. Whoa, my goodness. That's lovely. That out of the way. A like kind a, of a, a weaving. Tactile. Oh, it's wonderful. And there's cat hair just coming off of it. Just full of cat hair. Gosh, that's dreamy. <laughs> well, might I say it also looks a little bit like a Martian landscape. Thank you for high, highest praise. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, uh, uh, Alice, uh, uh, and it's so, so great to have you. Have you, have you also been spending time uh, in kind of virtual things? Do you get into the games and all that? Would the I game? see you on Animal Crossing? Oh, uh, I was just on. I'm making an orchard right now. Oh, oh well, uh, come on by and bring some exotic fruits, will you? I'm just waiting for hybrid plants all day. Oh, I've got all the fruits. I just got my first black rose. Wow. See, I knew that this was going to be okay. A couple yeah, of nerds getting I can getting make you together. a golden slingshot. Oh, I would like a golden slingshot. Yes, I love, love hearing people talk. I know this appeals to just a few people, but I love talking about uh, the crossing and getting my little person out there through the world of dip newt. It's very <laughs> exciting. Um, good. Well, I'm glad. Sometimes I just go in Zelda to climb a cliff or something, you know, and sure. just, just relax. I feel that Animal Crossing, for those people who like Zelda, I think it's the best part of Zelda. It's just the shopping and the cooking without, you know, it's like the chores, which is my favorite part of Zelda. <laughs> yes, it is. It is indeed. Well, uh, Alice, you, you, you're doing the show every when, Wednesday at 5? Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Oh, every day at 5. Yeah. That's quite a commitment. That's yeah, your news team. It really is. <laughs> and uh, still doing shows and things, I guess, in, in, on yeah. Zoom? Yeah. I'm doing a Zoom show later tonight. In a couple hours, I'll be taking over the Lyric Hyperion in Instagram for a half an hour. Terrific. Got some, um, got some tutorials uh, that I'm doing, so uh, so you can tune into that. And yeah, you'll see me on the internet. It sounds wonderful. Well, uh, Alice, thank you for being here. Your special is terrific, by the way. I thank hope you very much. Checks it out. Um, it's uh, really funny and really great. It's been a joy having you. And we're going to bring everybody back because it's time to wind things up here in the deep night. And wind so it up. Thank you. First to you, Alice. Thank you for being here. And to sure. Ike and Camelia and Odetta and Evan and Serena and Mina. My goodness. Thanks to everybody and to uh, Good Orbit for producing us. Uh, uh, tonight and remember that although this night is ending a bright new day is just ahead thanks everybody thanks for tuning in and watching thank you thank bye you bye bye everyone Adios. <laughs>